In this video on intellectual property, several examples will illustrate the role that IP plays in getting research to market. These illustrations provide a glimpse into careers in research, innovation, and product development to show what is possible when science and engineering fields like chemistry work with other creative disciplines such as design and marketing. The first video shows novel materials being developed by an interdisciplinary team in a university chemistry research lab. Next, you will hear about the four types of intellectual property. Then, the story of how a company, 3M, created post-it notes and used multiple types of IP protection to create value. In a third example, you will hear about JMU's biology and chemistry research that led to IP and a biotech startup company. Lastly, you will learn about a few of the resources available at JMU to support research and innovation. As we begin, let's consider the question, why do we have IP rights? A quick look at history tells us that our nation's founders, including James Madison, recognized the value of intellectual property. From the beginning of our nation, Congress enacted patent and copyright laws to protect the works of creative people for a limited time and encourage others to be creative. It is said that IP is the backbone of the American economy. Whoa, that's some serious stuff. To understand what it means, let's look at a few examples to learn the basics of IP and its role in product development and business growth. First up, a very cool video on chemistry research and product development at the University of Delaware. Chemists are good at inventing things. We create things. We're molecular engineers, if you will. So by nature, chemistry enables us to make things that are useful for society. We translate molecules into ideas and products that could be useful for people. I'm Norman Wagner. I'm a professor at the University of Delaware in the Chemical and Biomolecular Engineering Department, and our company's called STF Technologies. I'm very proud of the team that we've assembled it's a very interdisciplinary group. A number of years ago, we were working on these shear thickening fluids. Shear thickening fluids are very unique materials because they're field responsive fluids. The harder you push, the more it pushes back. That kind of response, which is not the normal response, can be harnessed in a creative way. We're trying to really provide protection where it doesn't exist. They might benefit first responders, police, military. One of our products that we're working on right now is with NASA to protect astronauts. And you'll see Rich and Eric and Maria and others trying to formulate special chemical formulations that will withstand the rigors of space, especially when we start talking about living and working on Mars. Some of the early work we did in ballistics and puncture resistance for body armor translates over to things like puncture resistant medical gloves for use by surgeons. I have an ice pick here. If you stab the conventional Kevlar, you can see you very easily go through. I use the shear thickening fluid treat Kevlar. You can't get through. Our partnership with the Army Research Lab is really essential to enable us to translate and, and take our ideas out of the laboratory and, and bring them into the real world practice. We had this idea that if we could get the response of a shear thickening fluid, but in something that's more like a strap that is speed dependent in its response, you could potentially make some sort of supporting wearable devices that could prevent concussions and head injury. Working with chemists is great and it's really important. You really need a chemist in there to do the details of how do I get this material to be compatible with that material. From there, once you have a technology that's new and different and can do something that no other material can do, then just applications will come to you, things you can't anticipate. And when you talk about prosthetic devices, the ability to provide people with a more realistic, lifelike prosthetic device is really critical to balance out the gate. To be able to use the fluid to dampen the forces to a limb would be pretty remarkable. You can try to match the range of motion yeah. uh, and the kinds of forces that the patient would feel. 
Basically, we're trying to use these chair thickening fluid tethers to customize it to each specific patient, each specific person. So that way they don't have to switch out, you know, oh, I'm going to go running today. I need to use a different prosthetics. It's definitely a team collaboration, and I'm happy to have a team. Our business is inherently interdisciplinary. We need talents and skills that go beyond any one particular discipline. Chemistry is at the heart of it, but there's so many other science and other soft skills that have to come together to be successful. And that playground is vast, and the opportunities are enormous to be able to do this. Research and innovation, as shown in the previous video, often lead to IP and new products. In this segment, Let's look at the four types of IP. First, patents. A patent issued by the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, USPTO, grants the patent holder IP protection, which is the right to exclude others from making, using, or selling the invention in the U.S. without a license from the patent holder. There are several types of patents with the main ones being design and utility. A design patent protects the ornamental designs on manufactured products. A utility or method of making patent describes how something works and it must meet four requirements. The subject matter must be patentable, the idea must be new, useful, and non-obvious from all the prior art, which means all patents and publicly available materials that have come before it. Typically, utility patent protection lasts 20 years from the date of filing, and in exchange, the innovation is disclosed to the public. This disclosure enables the cycle of innovation to continue and allows others to improve on these existing ideas, thereby creating new industries and spurring economic growth. A patent application must be filed with the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office within 12 months of public disclosure, which is a public presentation, publication, or discussion with others, or being offered for sale. So, if you truly have created something novel, useful, and non-obvious, protect your ideas and inventions through a patent application before sharing your inventions with the world. Another type of IP is copyright. Once you create an original work and fix it in a tangible form of expression, like taking a photograph, writing a blog, or recording a new song, you are the author and owner. Every creator has the right to add the copyright symbol to their written work. Companies and other people besides the work's creator can be copyright owners. Works created by an employee within the scope of an employment are owned by the employer. Copyright ownership can also come from contracts like assignments, wherein I assign my work to a company. If I were paid for my work and a work for hire contract, then the work belongs to the party who paid me. Remember, copyright exists automatically, but you can enhance the protection by registering your work with the Library of Congress. A third type of IP is trademark. Trademark can be any word, phrase, or design that identifies your goods or services. It's how customers recognize your company in the marketplace. You own a common law trademark as soon as you start using it to represent your goods or services within your geographic area. To obtain nationwide rights in the U.S., you must apply to register your trademark with the USPTO. Doing so provides broader rights and protections than an unregistered one. A circle R for registered trademark lets consumers and competitors know you are claiming the mark as yours. 
Trade dress protects the visual appearance of a product and distinguishes it from other similar products. The fourth type of IP is trade secret. Any information you would want your competitors to have, like your new business models, processes, or anything confidential. Coca-Cola's formula for syrup was never publicly disclosed and is held as a closely guarded trade secret. With this IP framework in mind, we will look at an example from industry applying multiple types of IP. By combining multiple types of IP, like a design patent trademark, a utility patent, a company can create stronger IP protection and a more powerful market position. Doing this strategically supports small company growth into global brands. One example is 3M with its product Post-it Notes. 3M protected the underlying science while transforming the brand into a household name. The story of Post-it Notes goes like this. A researcher and inventor for 3M, Spencer Silver, a PhD in organic chemistry, was working to develop a super strong adhesive, but instead he created a weak one that was sticky enough to stick to objects over and over, but not sticky enough to damage the surface. In 1970, 3M filed a utility patent for Sil Silver's novel copolymer microspheres to protect the method of creating the new adhesive technology. But no one had thought of a way to use it. No problem had been identified. So the researchers kept trying to come up with ways to use the adhesive. Four years later, Art Fry, a chemical engineer and new product development researcher at 3M, was singing in church, and his bookmarks kept falling out, losing his place, which made him think of his colleague's invention. Post-it notes was filed as a trademark in late 1975, but it took years of work and people with knowledge beyond the sciences to figure out how to make the removable sticky notes and to see how they would fare in the marketplace. The 3M team continued innovating and filed a patent application in 1986 for Fry's invention of repositionable, pressure-sensitive adhesive sheet material. The patent was granted in 1993, 23 years after the original discovery. While 3M continues to invent and file new patent applications on products registered trademark helps preserve a 75% market share for 3M long after the expiration of the original patents with products like these. Our previous examples show years of research by experts leading to discovery and IP. That happens here at JMU as well. The story to share with you now is told by Dr. Reed Harris, a biologist, as he and his chemistry colleague, Dr. Kevin Menville, made a discovery that led to a granted patent and a biotech startup company. I'm Dr. Reed Harris, professor of biology emeritus at JMU. My lab focused on amphibians, such as salamanders and frogs, which are important in ecosystems, since they can, for example, help control insects on land and algae and water. Unfortunately, amphibians are under threat by habitat loss and disease. My students and I focused on ways to prevent a devastating skin disease that threatens amphibians, which is caused by a fungal pathogen. We found that the skin of salamanders and frogs has many species of bacteria, and some of these bacteria produce chemicals that could kill the fungus. We hypothesized that we could use a microbiome or probiotic approach to disease prevention and cure. Through our research, we were able to demonstrate protection of the local redback salamander species from the skin disease by augmenting their skin with the bacteria that they already had and that kills the fungal pathogen. 
Dr. Kevin Minville, formerly of the JMU Chemistry Department, and I collaborated on this project. It occurred to us that probiotics for the skin could work for humans too. We discovered that one bacterial species, J. Liv, short for the Janthinobacterium lividum, was found on amphibian and human skin, so possibly it could inhibit the fungal species that causes tinea pedis or athlete's foot in humans. This was very exciting since currently available chemical treatments for athlete's foot are not very effective and can have potentially unwanted side effects. At this point, we contacted Mary Lou Bourne at James Madison Innovations, JMI, to see if we could obtain a patent. She was extremely supportive and helpful and remains so today. Thanks to her, we prepared an IP disclosure and other documentation, and JMI filed a patent application in 2009. Four years later, a US patent was granted. We talked with companies and entrepreneurs before and after the final patent was issued to find the right commercialization partner. At one point, I was approached by, approached by a venture capitalist who wanted to start a company focused on human skin probiotics. He had read our research papers on amphibians and their antifungal skin bacteria. His comment was along the lines of, your research is the only game in town when it comes to skin probiotics. After many discussions with this investor and entrepreneur, a startup company, Derm Biont, was formed in 2017. JMI licensed the patent for developing the technology into a product to help patients treat and prevent athlete's foot and other skin diseases. The company has conducted phase one and phase two clinical trials with JLIV, which showed significant improvement in the patient's conditions. Since then, the company has diversified into small molecule treatments of other skin conditions and concurrently is in the process of establishing new partnerships for its micro microbiome product development pipelines. This is one example, along with many others in the history of science, where research in one area, such as amphibian diseases, has led to health benefits for humans. Mary Lou and JMI make the process of seeking and obtaining a patent straightforward, and she works to find partners in the private sector. If you think you have something that could be commercialized in any field, I encourage you to contact Mary Lou to discuss options and to learn more on how to protect and promote your IP. After hearing these stories and IP leading to new products and companies, here are a few JMU resources where you can learn more. JMU Libraries for researching companies and competitors. JMU X Labs courses teach innovation and nurture creativity. The Gillum Center for Entrepreneurship for guidance with starting a company. And Technology Innovation and Economic Development, my office, for information on IP and using patents as a research tool to learn from prior art. I hope this video has provided insight into how research often leads to discoveries, innovations, and IP, creating new products that bring value to the marketplace. While research and innovation take time, involve a variety of people and skills, and it is not easy, it is exciting to discover and create new products and services that impact society.